Hi and welcome to the second episode of my DIY self-hosted smart home series. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'll leave a link to that in the cards above. Uh, I would recommend you check that out before watching this one as it covers all of the terms, technology and jargon that I'll be spouting here. This episode is all about getting the, the main system that will be controlling everything up and running and to connect a couple of these Philips Hue bulbs as a nice and actually relatively easy starting point and to get you familiar with both Home Assistant, the system we're going to be using, and getting things hooked up. Now, first things first, here is what you will need. A PC that ideally can be left running 24-7. Most people use a Raspberry Pi for this, but I'm a bit of a tech nerd and I already have multiple servers running 24-7 here anyway, so I'll be running this in a virtual machine on my Unraid-based system that I call Overkill because, uh, well, it's a 60 terabyte NAS with a 24-core AMD Threader per CPU. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I'll be using. Now, you will also need a Zigbee dongle. There are a pretty crazy number of options for this, but this Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 dongle comes ready to run out of the box. It's still one of the cheaper options. It looks great with a nice metal case and has an external antenna, or actually even positionable antenna. So I would personally recommend you just go ahead and pick one of these up unless you already know what you're after and you want something specific. I'll leave a global Amazon affiliate link to both of this and the bulbs in the description if you're interested. And finally, you'll need some devices to connect to it. For this video, I'll be using these Philips Hue White Ambience bulbs. These are technically the, the old version as listed on Amazon, not the newer ones that exclusively use Bluetooth. These can still use Zigbee to connect to their Hue Bridge Hub, as noted on the side of the box. Of course, you will need to get the correct bulbs for your sockets or light fixtures. I'm putting these in some freestanding lamps, which means I need these E27 bulbs, but obviously you'll need to get whichever ones fit in your fixtures or lamps, whatever else. So let's start the setup process. The first thing we need to do is install Home Assistant, the software that we're going to be using that lets us control all of our devices securely in one place, plus automate almost everything. It's fantastic. Now you've got two main ways that you can install Home Assistant, either as a complete operating system or as what's called a Docker container. Docker is a virtualization program that lets you run programs of their own in their own little boxes called containers in a secure and virtualized way. That is more complicated, uh, that's the, the more complicated option though, is it also opens up questions like do are you just going to use the core version or are you going to use the Home Assistant Supervisor, a program that lets you easily update both Home Assistant and your add-ons and that sort of stuff. So we're going to avoid all of those questions and take the easy option and just use the entire OS version. How you end up doing this will vary depending on what type of system or device you're planning on setting this up with. If it's a Raspberry Pi then you can follow the steps in their very well written installation guide that I'll leave a link to in the description if you're interested uh, to download the operating system image, burn it to your micro SD card, then plug it in and boot it up. For me, because I'm running this on my Unraid server, I could use the, the standard or the community Unraid plugin that just runs the core version of Home Assistant in a Docker container. But like I said, I prefer the easier method here. So instead, I'm going to go to the Home Assistant website and grab the full operating system image made for a virtual machine. That's under the Linux options, specifically the one listed as KVM uh, Doc UK2. I'll download that and transfer it to the uh, ISOs folder that Unraid creates 
automatically. I can then head to the VMs tab, making sure that I've already plugged in my Zigbee dongle to make sure that I can pass it through. Uh, once that's all set up, I can click the add VM button, Linux, give it a name, check the auto start button to make sure that it will turn on whenever our Unraid box uh, turns on or restarts, pick at least two CPU cores, although here because I have uh, 48, I'm going to pick a total of eight because yeah, why not? I also picked 4096 megabytes or four gigabytes of initial memory with maximum of six gigabytes uh, total. I left the machine option as Q35, BIOS is OVMF. I picked the primary VDisk location as that operating system image uh, and also added a second uh, VDisk as you know, main storage. Uh, I left everything else as is except for checking the Zigbee dongle in the USB pass-through box. It does come up as the USB controller's chip rather than the Zigbee chip itself, but uh, this is the right one, so check that. Then you can hit create and it should boot up. Now, in my case, on the virtual machines page, if I click on the penguin image, I get a menu with the option to VNC remote. That pops up a new window which, uh, with our vir virtual machine, which should be busy setting things up. It might take a, a minute or two to get it all up and running. Uh, but when you get the, uh, the Home Assistant ASCII art logo, well, then you will have uh, the address that you need to go to, to to finish the installation just in your web browser. If your router supports it, you should be able to just go to homeassistant.local uh, colon 8123 uh, or if you don't have that set up and running like me then the IPv4 address that's listed will be the one to head to which in my case was 192.168.1.190 do make sure that you add the colon 8123 on the end though otherwise it might not connect once you've gone to that address you should have the setup wizard available to you and it's super simple you give it uh, you know they give the system a name you tell it where you are for things like the sunrise and sunset times and weather then it will ask you if you'd like to set up the devices that it has already gone away and found. In my case, it found my Elgato lights, uh, my Nanoleaf panels, my Ubiquiti cameras, and the Zigbee dongle already. They were all automatically detected and ready to, to set up with pretty much a single click. I made sure to set up the Zigbee dongle just by clicking the uh, submit button or the configure button submit, and that's pretty much it. It then took a few minutes, but uh, it then asked what room it was in. I added that for good measure. I also set up the Elgato lights and Nanoleaf panels, again, all with a single click, save for pressing the button on the Nanoleaf panel controller itself to allow it to pair, but otherwise it was incredibly simple. And yeah, that's it for setting up Home Assistant. That is it up and running. The Zigbee controller is configured and ready to go. It's incredibly painless and I am genuinely impressed. Now, I'm going to be doing a full video on tweaking and improving Home Assistant, so I'll leave all of that sort of stuff out for now and we'll just get to setting these lights up. Now, these Philips Hue bulbs are in particular can be a little fussy in getting them connected to anything other than a Philips Hue hub. Specifically, only if they have already been paired to uh, a Philips Hue hub or a bridge. If, like me, you've just bought them brand new, then the setup process is really easy. If not, it still isn't too bad. Basically, you just have to factory reset them or physically un uh, or so as unpair them in some way, which can be done in a couple of different ways. You can either, uh, if you have them connected to a Philips uh, Hue bridge already, you can reset them from the app and unpair them. If not, then you have to, or you can follow uh, the guide that's also linked in the description to use a feature called Touch Link to reset them. The catch is that the bulb has to be within 10 centimeters of your dongle, so it's best to either do this with a lamp that you can move or a laptop you can hold. Now, assuming that your bulbs are factory resets, either by you or because you just 
bought them new, then you can head to the configuration button down on the bottom left, then the devices and services option, click the configure uh, button or text inside the, the Zigbee box, then on the bottom right, click the add device button. Assuming the lights are powered on, you know, screwed in and switched on, Home Assistant will automatically search for and find them and set everything up automatically. All you need to do is give them a name and pick which room they're in. That specific part is actually quite a, a genuinely useful feature, so it is worth setting that up sort of properly but then that is it. The default dashboard, the topmost option on the, the sort of sidebar called overview, will automatically populate with the rooms that have devices in them. So from there, you can turn the light on or off. And also because these are color temperature changing bulbs, if you click on the name, not only does it give you uh, full brightness control, but also the color temperature, which is fantastic. All you have to do is drag the sliders around to change it. It does take a few seconds to fully update. If you drag and let go, it then will reset and actually get to where you set it to. It can take a few seconds, but it still works great. So that'll do for this episode. Next time, we're gonna get a little more advanced with the, the lighting controls and tweaking Home Assistant to work for us a little bit better. Then in the coming episodes, we'll be moving on to smart central heating, which I am very, very excited for because it's actually really cold in here. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that being even just remotely intelligent. Of course, if you want to pick up either of these uh, bulbs or the, the Zigbee controller, I'll leave, like I said, Amazon affiliate links in the description you can check out. Those are global links, so feel free to take a look. Also, if you want to stay up to date on this series, then you can do so by hitting the subscribe button, turning on the bell notification icon, and checking out the rest of the series on the end cards. If you're watching this right when it came out, then if you haven't already, like I said, check out the first video. And if you're probably not watching this right when it comes out, then there's probably a whole load more videos in that playlist you can check out. So feel free to take a look. Otherwise, uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, things you want to see in the series or anything else, let me know in the comments down below. You can support me by, of course, just hitting that subscribe button or more directly through things like the YouTube join button and become a YouTube member. Patreon, you can pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of ones I designed myself. And there's also some other affiliate links or places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there and a load of other stuff in the description. So feel free to check those out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.